Axstab thinks constantly with Sand King coming from the backside or Luna swinging around or Nature's Prophet doing aggressive TPs, but it just didn't do quite enough. So that's going to be game one, guys. Uh, Zenith takes game one of this best of two against Orange. So this is the first game of Group B. I hope you guys are excited for all the games tonight. Let's see what you guys have to say on the panel. Well, hello there. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, Zenith, getting the XY Tinker, such a signature hero for him and exploiting the hell out of it. Honestly, how do you fight into that lineup? If you don't win the laning stage, it's just impossible. Yeah, it's one of those things that when you play against a Tinker, you know the game is going to be drag out. <laughs> uh, it's going to be difficult to push. Right. Taking, it's really difficult because if you want to take a fight, you're going to have to do it under multiple marches and doing something, I, I mean, XY so like fluid with his Tinker. Yeah. I think knowing that it's not a hero that most teams will ban, but knowing that's one of his favorite heroes, I, I mean, you guys have Tinker, 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 right? <laughs> As that was that was me taking some artistic liberties, I guess you yeah. could say. But when you know something like that is going to happen, you at least have to like consider banning it or and taking it out. Yeah, and Orange have lost to his Tinker a lot. It's they're one. Of, you know, these two teams are two of the top teams in Southeast Asia. They play each other all the time, so he knows that they they know that he plays. Yeah, it's tinker. not even like a surprise pocket pick. It's like a well, we're probably going to do this because this is like at the international too. It's the Chinese teams playing against Navi. You ban Pudge because he's beating everyone on land with Pudge and. Well, they did that, and in the end, it worked out. Yeah, I'd like to see more targeted bans this game. Yeah, maybe take out some of the heroes that Zenith are more comfortable with. I really expected Orange to kind of come out on top of this, especially with the lineup that they had. I mean, they had such an aggressive lineup. They had the Sand King, the the Visage, but they just weren't able to execute as smoothly as I think they wanted to. Especially since you're diving against heroes like Tinker, it makes it really difficult. I feel like it also really hurt them that they had Visage Sand King and they didn't try lane aggressively because. Because they didn't have good roaming supports. Like, you have Visit Sand King, you can't go gank Tinker with that. Yeah, and on top of the fact that Sand King, it's a little difficult uh, because he seems like an aggressive hero, but at the same time, the level 1 stun, even the level 2 stun is so poor, the yeah. distance on it, you actually almost need boots or a hero to initiate in first to actually land the stun. So if you're RNG Sports going into game 2, it sounds like your most, your like number 1 in your priority list is... Target your bans. Don't just ban what you normally ban. Ban what Zenith are really good at. Yeah, I think that's what you uh, try to do. Um, maybe be a little more even with your picks and just try to play a more stable style where, I don't know, it just it felt like that game was just kind of sloppy by Orange. Yeah, and I also, I like Mushi mid. I feel like that's just the best style for RNG sports. KYXY, Ohio, they're both good at the solo, solo role. They're good in the laning stage, but I feel like Mushi is... He's that player who just says, all right, I'm going to make a play now. Sort of like what RTK does for DK. They didn't have that, and, well, it kind of hurt them in that game. And it's, it's tough on the Beastmaster to really make things happen at the end of the day. That, that hero is it's fantastic if your movement is right, but Zenith just anticipated every movement almost perfectly. Yeah, it's one of those heroes that really you need to snowball with your roar and then get a few team fights going and then push down towers with your aura. Yeah. Use the Hawk to kind of establish map control. But if you're not able to do that early it really feels like that hero just kind of plummets in terms of effectiveness. So Orange, if you're listening to us right now, ban Tinker, pick Mushi a Snowball Hero mid, and you got it. You'll take game two. Yeah, I think they definitely can, especially since they're just as talented, in my opinion. Well, we'll find out, guys. That's game one. It's a wrap. We'll be right back after these messages with game two. It's the Alienware Cup brought to you, of course, by Alienware and MasterCard, as well as DPM Interactive. Stay tuned.
We're live. Hey, guys. <laughs> I, I was waiting for you, you to go. Shit, I'm in the right chair. We didn't talk about this. This was I'm really so sorry. Smooth. We're off to a great start, uh, and so to our team, Zenith. They're 1-0 and zero in this best of two, Kevin. Yeah. Game two, we're going to get into it. Uh, it's, of course, the Alienware Cup brought to you by Alienware, MasterCard, DPM Interactive, and us here at Beyond the Summit. Yep, and uh, I am affiliated with none of these people, but uh, I'm where's, here. where's your Purge Gamers mug? I, it's over there. Yeah. It's actually bought right behind the camera. Yeah, he'll get that fixed for next game. I'll have yeah, like right, an yes. entire minefield of them. You get but the branding better, and <laughs> I'm feeling right now. Yeah, that's, that's what that's what we're here for. But of course, game one, it went to Zenith on the back of an XY Tinker, and game two is now underway. Let's yeah. hop into it. Thanks everyone for tuning in. By the way, uh, into the draft here, first pick going to Orange. Let's see if they can do something different. The Tinker was really, really effective. It created a lot of space, which uh, allowed Orange to execute what they want to do. Or I'm sorry, which allowed Zenith to do what they want to do, which was push, take towers, and win team fights. So. I, I feel like it wasn't necessarily, like the Tinker won them the game, but I feel like they could do it with a lot of different heroes. I, I felt like that wasn't necessarily an abuse. It was something they played very well, but it didn't really feel like a major abuse. I just, like, imagine if Orange got all those ganks off on the bot, to bot tower and they actually got kills with them. Like, it wouldn't have mattered. Like, Tinker usually showed up late anyways. He shot a missile or two, but yeah. it was like their ganks just weren't quite solid enough. So I feel like it was more Orange's heroes than it was what Zenith had to work with. Yeah, it was that, and it was also just they couldn't quite find the openings. Like, Zenith were pretty strong defensively in terms of their positioning, and it wasn't just the Tinker. I mean, you're also diving into Earthshaker, Fissure, into Darkseer, Surge, Vacuum. He had an early mech, Chen Hand of God. And Zenith, they were often, like, way behind the tower. So Orange just... I mean, it's what we saw. I believe it was Orange yesterday. Uh, or was it, No, it wasn't Orange yesterday. It was MUFC yesterday. Uh, who just overextended those, some of those tower dives or... No, actually, sorry. It's LGD China versus LGDN where they just took bad dives. Like, it's one thing to fight with the Beastmaster. You run them solo mid, you want to fight early, but it's got to be the right kind of fight. Yep. So we're going to see a Visage Lifestealer out of Orange. They did grab the Visage up in the previous game. Hopefully they can do a bit better with it now, but on the bright side, I've got Lifestealer, one of the best diving heroes in the game. The Dark Seer or Gyrocopter, again, same picks out of Zenith here. But this time we're going to see both a Puck Ban. Uh, did we see Puck Ban in the last game? Do you remember it by any chance? Mm, I, no, I, at least not in the first phase. Puck, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, was available, but later on might have been banned out. Yeah, so a lot of junglers now being banned by Orange. They apparently don't want to use them themselves, but um, they can use those. They would have been able to use those to get a lot of map control and push if needed. So, Well, if Zenith want to go for a very similar lineup this game, they can. Tinker's still in the pool. The one big difference is there won't be a Chen. Chen's been banned out, so... I think you stick with what worked for you. Tinker's a pretty decent hero against uh, against a Lifestealer Visage. Y you can tower dive, but you're still not tower diving through March of the Machines. Affects magic immune units. You can at least remove the blind with Rage, so that'll help the Lifestealer. But end of the day, I feel like if Zenith want to run a similar lineup, they probably could. Yep, um, it's definitely a possibility. They could draft it up here. Um, like you said, um, magic immunity doesn't really matter when you throw March on the ground. It's going to hit them no matter what. So, And Lifestealer is always going to be in the action. He's always going to be up front in melee range. So it can be pretty threatening for him as a spell. So they're going to grab a Trium Protector. Another oh no. hero that we see a whole ton in the Eastern scene. Uh, more commonly in the West is kind of a staple, something that you see consistently. Um, they already have an offlane here with Darkseer, so I'm guessing this is going to be a support Trion. But most importantly, really great against heroes like Lifestealer. Um, he does quite a bit of damage, but it's over multiple sources. He doesn't have, like... Uh, a large scale magic nuke, so the tree armor's gonna be really good towards uh, saving whoever Lifestealer goes on. What is Zenith up to here? Tree ant pick. Are we gonna see a Weaver? Do they have some sort of clowny diving strategy prepared? Or are they just doing this to troll gods? It's one of the three, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> uh, we've seen tree ant rise to popularity as of late in the Western scene, and Zenith is one of the more creative and uh, versatile teams in the eastern scene so let's see if they can have the same kind of success that Goblack has had with this hero in the past yeah the hero's really good at keeping people alive and it like you said i would be surprised if they didn't use it for some kind of a combo because they started the draft off the same way they grabbed dark seer and gyrocopter they didn't really force aggressiveness with either of these i mean maybe ice 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 could get more exp this way instead of having to leave the lane at level one and go jungle and go back to lane eventually but i i, I completely agree they're going to go with something aggressive i don't know what it's going to be but um, it's going to be probably their mid hero, I guess, or maybe their support. I mean, they won't even be able to gank that well, though, because if they have a support tree, like, you can't really gank with a tree on plus one, you know? Yeah, I mean, the the other way, you, you have to pick an aggressive solo. That's really the only way you can do it, is with the Weaver. And, and then it's just up to the Weaver or something like that to tower dive a lot. The other option is, if they're expecting Orange to try and go balls to the wall aggression, then... You get the Treant, makes it very hard to go aggressive on heroes like Tinker, mm -hmm. like Gyro or Darkseer. So 
Uh, we'll see what they do with this Treant pick, but they snap it up rather early. I feel like if they wanted to fifth pick it, uh, there's a 99.9% .9 chance it would have been there. Yeah. Uh, but hey, they, they decide to snap it up now. So Orange gets their third pick, taking a lot of time on this one, burning through some of their reserve here. Uh, they currently have a hard carry. They have their first support, which can do fit uh, fit into a lot of lane setups and do quite a few things. Um, they're looking for a second, though. I would love to see something else like Avenge. Uh, I think Venge Lifestealer is just a fantastic combo. The minus armor plus Lifestealer is great, and they're going to go for a Slark, so they want to hard counter the tree immediately. This is very smart, because Slark can mid very simply, and uh, one level of Dark Pact just blows through the tree armor. So whoever he's up against, if they are planning something weird with the mid laner, Slark can counter it. Yeah, this is a very aggressive hero, and you, ha you combine this with the Lifestealer Visage, very gank heavy, minimal team fight, and they're up against, potentially later on, Vacuum, Overgrowth, Call Down, Flat Cannon. Mm -hmm. You want to win this laning stage. You want to snowball either the Slark or the Lifestealer or the Visage, ideally all three if you can. Now they'll be need at least one support, maybe two. Visage could be a farmer in the tri lane. We'll see what they go for. Lifestealer can solo, Slark can solo. Uh, they have some options at their disposal here. My one big question is, who's going to lane against Darkseer? Because right now, RNG Sports, they don't have anyone who's really going to match up well 1v1 in a side lane. Slark's yep. okay, but you can't really dominate a Darkseer. Yeah, I would say Lifestealer is maybe their best option right now, because he can yeah. get Lifesteal from the creeps, and if you choose, they will probably not go Midas, but I mean, you can do things like midas the creep or Infesting the Iron Shell creep. There's a couple small tricks that Lifestealer can use to get more advantage over another melee hero, but largely it's... It's not really a fun matchup. Um, I, another reason I really like the Triumph Protector pick is because Overgrowth is really good against Lifestealer. It, it doesn't really matter if you do the damage to him, but you can use Overgrowth while he rages, and that's going to prevent him from actually attacking or moving during that time period. And pr pretty okay against Lark as well. I mean, he's going to probably pack, uh, cast Dark Pact, but it can catch him. And uh, Oh Enigma. my god. Huh. Look at this five-man Dota from Zenith. Their mid-game combo is AOE's insane. Okay. Orange don't have a single real AoE hero. And you've got Dark Pact, you've got the familiar stuns. Not true AoE, at least not that reliable. You do not want to let Zenith get level 6 without being ahead. If yeah. you do, that's going to be trouble. There's really not a lot of stuns for Orange at the moment either. They basically have the bats. And if I'm not mistaken, were those recently... Black Hole can catch them now, is that correct? Oh, I God. feel like that I was, I feel I like that was a change. I know...